In this video, we're going to be making a floor plan that is rasterized. So it's a pixelated image. Um, that being said, it shouldn't take us too long to make this. This should be um, more of a quick exercise that we can uh, produce uh, rapidly. But at the same time, we're trying to maintain um, a high quality um, drawing with good line weights, uh, similar to this example. So we'll start with our 3D SketchUp model. And the first thing we want to do, obviously, um, in order to get a floor plan is to cut a section through our roof. So I'll just use a section tool and then I'll pull down the section uh, to exactly where I want it. When I'm doing this, I'm just making sure that I'm cutting through all my windows and doors, um, but at the same time, making sure that I have the section plane as high as possible. This is going to give me uh, the best result uh, whenever I turn on my shadows. So the next thing I did was I put my um, view into a parallel projection and then did the top down view to give me a true plan. Now I can make a scene. That way we have our view saved and are able to get back to it whenever needed. The next step is to set up our style um, to get ready to export. So um, just like any other drawing that we do, we want to do the hidden line just the black lines on the white paper and then we want to turn on our profile lines to make sure we're picking up all of our rounded objects the next thing i'm doing is turning on color by layer and then going into my styles and going to my edge settings and choosing or changing the edge color to by material so now i'm going to use my layer colors as a way to control my line weight or line hierarchy in SketchUp, you can't actually uh, change the line thickness of typical lines, but here you can see I'm just using um, different shades of black or, or gray um, to get the necessary um, lines to fade out. For instance, the furniture, I want it to be a little bit more subtle, so I'm giving it a light gray color, which although it's not a true uh, line weight, it's still going to give us the same effect of um, fading it out. And I'll do the same for my grids because I want them to also be faded out. The next thing I'm doing is a cool trick that I like to use whenever I'm exporting uh, JPEGs or rasterized images. Um, I'm going to make a scale that will exist inside of my SketchUp model. That way, whenever I'm in post-production, um, I have something to go off of to actually uh, draw my scale. I don't have to worry about it um, being accurate because I know that it's true to the model. So once I got my scale in there, I went ahead and exported a 2D image of just my lines. The next export I'll do is just the section cut. When I do this cut, when I do this export, I, I want to turn down my section cut lines and my style settings to make sure I'm getting as close to just on the actual poche of the section. So it's easier for us to edit in Photoshop. The next few exports I'll do are the section cut lines and you'll notice I export um, a couple different line thicknesses just to have a variety um, to play around with once we get into Photoshop. This will let me um, choose what I think looks best in terms of line thickness without having to worry about coming back later to export more. And once we get into Photoshop, I'll, I'll circle back and you'll, you'll see um, why I did this exactly. The next export will be just the shadows. So I'll, I turn my section color to white, my section cut lines to white, and just turn on my shadows, adjusted the darkness of the shadows, and then I'll export this as a 2D image as well. And just for fun, I'm also doing an ambient occlusion render. Um, and you'll notice once we get into Photoshop, this really isn't even that necessary. I, I think I'll end up um, turning it pretty much all the way down in terms of opacity. But the reason I'm doing this is because when I do get to Photoshop, I just want to maximize um, my options in terms of um, how I can stylize this drawing. So once we have all of our passes from SketchUp, I'm going to go ahead and open them all up in Photoshop. And this is just where I um, choose one to be the base file, click and copy all of the um, passes onto that file um, and align them and rename the layers to make sure I'm staying as organized as possible, um, which will just 
make it that much easier when we're um, further along trying to make changes to the file. So once I have all of my layers organized, I um, the first thing I do is uh, change all of them to multiply. That way the white uh, is transparent and all the black bleeds through. And then I'll make some just initial adjustments to some of my, um, like the ambient occlusion image, my shadow image, just to get it a little bit closer to where it'll be um, when we're finished. The more drawings that you do like this, the less time you have to spend tinkering around with the settings because you'll know what worked previously and you can use those same settings when it comes to opacity, um, the hue and saturation, um, the brightness and contrast, and really just any other uh, post-process settings that you'll apply in Photoshop. This next step, I'm using my section cut export from SketchUp. Uh, to mask and create my own section pochet. So to do this, I wanna select all of the black. So I'll use the select color range, select the black pochet. Now you can see I automatically have that entire um, section cut selected. So then for this first layer, what I wanna do is just paint it white um, because I want to add a actual pattern, hatch pattern to it, but I need a backdrop because that hatch pattern is transparent and obviously I want that to be white so this one I'll just um, fill in completely white by using the paint bucket tool and now I'll drag my section cut layers above my um, exported section cut lines and now here's where you'll see where those multiple exports come in handy I, I kind of have control over um, how much thickness I have. So I decided to go with kind of the level three thickness there. Um, I thought that the last one was a little bit too thick. And now you can start to see the drawing coming together. Now I want to add a hatch pattern to the section cut. So to do this, I'll use the rectangle tool. I'll change it to shape. And now I'm just going to click and drag over my entire drawing. And you'll see that it um, allows me to select a fill color. Um, but for this, I want to use the patterns. And I can choose the diagonal line. So if I zoom in, you can see they're, they're pretty small. And obviously, there are a few other um, patterns that are built in default. First thing I'll do is scale the pattern up because I know um, it was too small to begin with. And now using the same strategy that we used uh, to, to paint the section cut white, we're going to um, use the color range selection to once again select our section cut. And ideally, you should probably only have to do this once if you save your selection. But for the purpose of this video, I just went ahead and um, went through the process again. And now I just select my uh, pattern layer and then I add a layer mask and it'll automatically um, mask the the, the texture just to where I was selected. And you can see that it's a little bit um, too big. So what we can do is over on our layers tab, if we double click, I don't know what it's called, but if we double click on this little icon that allows us to adjust um, the scale again, so we can get it to exactly how we want. And you can also um, change the pattern in this panel too. Because my walls are kind of angled, at first I thought I might want to do just like a horizontal or vertical hatch, but um, I ended up just choosing the diagonal hatch. And then as you can see, once you have it, you can also play around with the opacity to get it um, to look exactly how you want so that it's not um, too subtle and it's also not um, too heavy. Now I'm going to turn back on my shadows layer and I decided that I just wanted my shadows to be inside of the building rather than on the ground outside. So what I did was I just used my lines layer to select the outside portion of the shadows. And then I just went to the shadows layer and deleted it. Now I'm adding a profile layer uh, so I can come in here and add a more thick line all the way around the boundary of the building. And just like any other drawing, uh, just because this is a 2D plan doesn't mean we can't add that profile line because it really uh, does add 
a little bit more of a substantial boundary to your drawing. And really, I think the coolest part or for me doing a drawing like this in Photoshop is the amount of control I have over the final output. And it's really just fun to play around with the different settings you can get um, to work for your drawing. Now, just like I did uh, for the hatch pattern for the cut, I'm going to add some texture to some of the floor in the building. And I don't take this too far, but I just wanted um, to show you how to do it. Um, I'm going to use my lines layer and my magic wand tool, and I'm just going to select the spaces that I want to, to apply that texture to. And then I'll go back to that texture and then I'll add a layer mask, just like I did for the hatch. And as you can see, it'll um, isolate it just to those spaces. And just like before, I can scale it. Um, I can change the pattern if I want, and then I can also um, adjust the opacity. And as I'm doing this, I'm like thinking of multiple ways that you can do this. For me, this has always been the way that I've done it. So it's the quickest and makes the most sense to me. But I mean, there are um, a bunch of different and maybe even more efficient ways of doing it. And just real quick, I'll go ahead and add this uh, tiled pattern to some of the bathrooms and uh, mechanical rooms. So right now you're looking at um, the image without the ambient occlusion layer on that rendering pass I did. So as you can see, um, it's actually not even necessary, um, but sometimes it is pretty cool. So for instance, if I wanted to add color to this drawing, I'll, I'll use just my magic wand tool and my paint bucket tool. Um, and then if I uh, change the, or I turn on the ambient occlusion layer and I play around with uh, the, the settings of the color layer, such as putting on linear burn or overlay, and then I make my um, ambient occlusion a little bit darker, you can start to see how that color um, really plays with those uh, shadows. And it gives a really cool effect uh, to the drawing. And you can imagine doing this with actual textures like a uh, hardwood floor or um, a tile or something. But for me, I'm really happy with just the black and white drawing. So I'm just going to export this and take it into InDesign. And in InDesign, this is where we're going to do all of our annotating and labeling. So the first thing I'm going to do is import the drawing, scale it, crop it the way I want, and position it on this 11 by 17 sheet, which doesn't necessarily have to be the final output of the drawing, but I'm uh, using this as kind of the home base for this drawing. I can always copy and paste um, the stuff in this file onto a bigger poster board. The first thing I want to do is add um, a label to my grid. And because I did my grid in SketchUp, uh, I don't have to worry about adding those lines in InDesign or Photoshop. So what I'm going to do is just add the text, which I could have done in SketchUp. But um, for this, I just wanted to do all of my text in uh, InDesign to make sure uh, it, I could streamline the fonts and the font sizes. So as you can see, I'm, I'm just quickly, um, I know this isn't, this probably isn't the most traditional way to do a grid um, or label the grid, but uh, it works pretty well, especially for a quick um, drawing like this. Next, I'll add my uh, little uh, space or room number indicators. And as you can see, I'm pulling this stuff from uh, a save file that I have of uh, kind of a library of things that I use for other drawings. And uh, you'll notice that most of the stuff is too big when I copy it in. So all I do is scale it down. And, you know, I'm, I'm always checking to make sure um, it looks OK. Sometimes it's stuff's too big, so I make it even smaller and just go from there. Another reason why I'm doing this is because I just want to show you that InDesign is actually a very useful tool for doing stuff like this. You don't only have to do this um, in AutoCAD or in Illustrator. Um, this, this stuff can actually be added to your drawings um, towards the very end of uh, your workflow, which uh, I've actually found to be just as efficient as just about anything else. And now I'm adding um, just some simple arrows to some of my stairs uh, just to show the direction that they're rising. 
and uh, I'll also add just like a little uh, text labeled up or down. The next thing I'll add is just a simple section cut line. Um, I'm not even going to label it. This is just, these are just going to be like very simple, um, kind of diagrammatic. Obviously, this might not be used for a final presentation because you typically want to label your section cuts. Um, but as you can see, just using a simple line with two rectangles on either end, um, it's an easy and clear way to show uh, this kind of information. Now I'll pull down um, my the window of my image so I can reveal that uh, scale that I exported from my SketchUp model. And now using a, a scale that I uh, made in InDesign uh, previously, all I have to do is adjust this uh, to this size and change the labels accordingly. And now I have um, a scale that I know for sure um, is accurate to my drawing. And you might not think that adding the scale or even a north arrow, as you see, I copy and paste in here is too crucial, but really you should have these on every single drawing you do. Even if it's just for a desk crit, I like to get in the habit of making sure it's always there. And then finally, I'll just add a little um, text uh, table so I can title my drawing and then add um, the names of each label. So here's the finished drawing, and um, hopefully this video gives you a better understanding of how um, you can make rasterized or pixelated uh, drawings, but still have um, a pretty good amount of control over what they or what the final output of them actually is. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching.